Into the crack house. Into the crack house. Into the crack house. Into the crack house. Hello and welcome to Minisode 44. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by co host Man Daddy, Angela, and Kaz. So, do you guys know anything about the Drake equation? When it comes to trying to find extraterrestrial life, so you got to uh, go ahead. You, so, you had one. Damn, I was trying to think of a Drake lyric. God's I plan can't. or something. Like that. <laughs> Canadian rapper, yeah, whatever. Overrated, yeah. just things like that. Is he like own Jay- Toronto now? Something like that. Yeah, yeah the six. That's his. Yeah, the yeah. six. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, back in 1960, Frank Drake, he was an astronomer, and he also tried to find out if there was any extraterrestrial life out there with any intelligence. He decided to come up with a theorem to calculate the probability of us hearing from said extraterrestrial intelligent civilization. So the first factor is we have to have some kind of technology technology that can hear from them correct yeah yeah okay so whatever we put out we can't ascertain that anyone else is even picking that up so we need to make sure we can get something from them so that would pretty much set up that we are communicating with an intelligent life form we know how many stars have planets we do not know for any certain reason if that planet has any kind of uh advanced structural being not to say humans are the smartest, because they're not. No. Bo- bottlenose dolphins, gorillas, crows, they would they would easily be up there. Yes. Um, so the Drake equation over the years, it's it, people have been trying to solve it. So do you know how many people in the United States believe that we have been contacted by another entity? How many people believe we have? Yeah, fifteen at, out of out of one hundred percent, zero to one hundred percent. Percentage, 100%, yep. percentage. Uh, twenty. Uh, I go as high as thirty-five. I will say forty-two. It's around fifty. Oh, Boom. so Angela gets that one. Yes. Uh, now because of the new Drake equation, and I'm reading this from space. dot that thing just dropped. How? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On a Friday, good. that's yep. pretty good. Um. What is the new possibility, do you think, that there is a possibility of intelligent life that we know of in the visible universe out of 100, 0 to 100 percent? What is the new probability that there is intelligent life that can communicate with us? I go up to high 90s, 98, 99. Uh, 68. Uh, I'm going to say 45. It's... 38%. Angela again gets no yeah, shit. 38%. 38%. Of visible? That's the lowest that it has been since Drake <clears throat> came up with this theorem back in 1960. So it is the Drake equation, and it's what we use to nominate, I guess, uh, in a numbers instance, what that probability of life is. And that is not good. What are the factors then? Again, um, the idea that we would have a technology source that would communicate with that technology source and also that a planet of the ones that we know in the habitable zone which is where earth resides around our star if that civilization has water if that planet has some kind of you know like it's a very nuanced code again it's a human speculating it so it's but it's like we talked about it's one of these things that is proving itself right Correct, right? They're not just like, hey, numbers off the charts for some reason. Every 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 planet should have a, you know, they, they're like, oh, shit, never mind. Now that we know all of this about these planets, none of these are clearly can either, you know, sustain something that would be able to broadcast some type of communication to us. Well, you know, 38% seems low, but that's not zero. Correct. So uh-huh. there's still that idea that there is something out there. That there can... has to be. It's still more than a third. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There has that's to be. There's no way we're odds, it. Right? There's no way it's just us. He I mean, said. that's just so rude. He's stupid. <laughs> well, I do I do kind of agree with your reasoning though, Kaz, that like we've been looking at space and using technology and getting further and further out there and still nothing's been happening. I think people are kind of getting bored and giving up like, "Nah, there's nothing." Exactly, yeah. right. Like we're <laughs> the, the, the point of attrition is like we're, we're going to need to hit something soon. I feel like the Dyson sphere attrition, was the thing, nice. right? Like Dyson sphere freaked me out. Yeah. That looked uh, uh, looked interesting, but I think then they end up saying that it was more looking like more of a natural occurring yeah, phenomenon I mean, at this for point. Sure. Stuff Definitely. Like that. That's what your government will tell you. Talking yeah. about the, just to reference past minisodes, the star anomaly, right, that Correct. has some kind of, 
what they think is a force field or some kind of dark matter. Something that is it. like regularly systematically blocking the light in kind of a orbital way that they feel like something is in front of this and rotating with this star and that it's blocking it in a very systematic rhythmic way that they're like that. It could be natural, could be, or could be something else, could be something trying to harness the energy of that. That's cool. Well, anyway, there you go. 38%, which is uh, the lowest it odds. has been, but yeah. uh, you know what? If 50% believe in something that has no physical proof, that's a, still a pretty good odd. I'll take that any day. Absolutely. Yeah. But what cracks me up about talking about people getting bored that we haven't mm-hmm. found anything yet, the universe is kind of a big thing. It's kind of a kind lot of. larger than most people would like to th- think because oh, yeah. you can't really conceive of it. It's so large. That's the very first part of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is space. It's big. I always used really to think, big. Too, I always used to think, you know, well, when you get into space, it's a 360 plane, right? No, because of the gravity of the center of our Milky Way universe, it's pretty much a north-south window and then just a flat plane, you know, like into the center of the universe because it's been spinning for so strong forever. It's a flat plane going around this nucleus. Def- we can definitely dive very Wait, you're a flat universer? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So uh, what you got for us, Angela? Well, speaking of space, do you guys know how many moons Jupiter has? Bunch. Jupiter known moons? Known moons. Known moons. I will say they have over, so moon is synonymous with satellite, I will say they have over 60, 60 plus known satellites. Okay. Uh, I say it's at least 100. I'm going to go with eight. Eight? Really? Eight. Largest planet in our solar system. Little, you think. Like, yeah, maybe right. they got some stuff floating around it. Yeah. Right. So known moons, they had 67. 67. Oh! Son of a bitch. Point. But they actually just discovered 12 more. 12? M- oh, so no. 79. Oh! oh! You're so fucked. Uh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's just quietly drinking he his beer He knew about shit. the moons. <sighs> no, I had no idea. Oh. So 12, that's care. amazing. So there's there's 12 more satellites Around yes, Jupiter. There's That's 12 cool. more. Where are they going to name them? Around. They actually haven't named any of them, to be honest with you. Because that's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is that we named all these planets after gods and their moons after a different mythology and stuff. We named our planet after dirt, earth, dirt. And dirt, we named yeah. our moon fucking moon. We named our moon moon. We couldn't have come up with something better. That's so annoying. That is. That does bother me. <laughs> but then again, my first dog, we named it dog. So now I understand. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you just knew with the naming thing. It just worked. Yeah. It just worked. Well, so unlike, there's one, though. There's one specific moon. Um, it's a, it's in the prograde group, but actually rotates with the planet. So retrograde goes against the planet's rotation. Right. So that's kind of like our moon satellite, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Um, the, the new moon, Valetudo, has an orbit that crosses retrograde. It's called Valetudo? Very... Valetudo yes. means anything goes. Yeah. That is amazing. And it, like, In Brazilian. Crosses. How do you I did spell not it? know that. Uh, v A L E T U D O. That means no rules, anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a party moon. So he goes, what what's the what's this moon? He does something special about this moon. He's a he's a prograde, but he like crosses the orbits of like retrograde moons, ah. which is super crazy and weird. So he's weird. He's yeah. a weirdo moon. So or that, she. they call the, they call that just like an oddball. Do they <laughs> is it is it close to Jupiter? Is it is it out? Like, would it interfere with other satellites? I'm just kind of wondering how... It's actually more like in the exterior orbit. I have, like, a little picture here. Nice. So you have, like, some of them are closer to Jupiter, but this one's in the, in the retrograde orbit, which is the exterior. Uh. And it, like, crosses with those, which is really interesting. But it's a prograding orbit. So uh, you Angela would imagine... visual aids. I yeah, did. You would imagine that would probably throw in flux other uh, satellites. Correct. Because it's kind and of you have so it's many going of them. away, yeah. yeah it's so spiraling it's- out from the other satellites, but it's still far away from this massive. It's the biggest planet we have. It's it's. Uh, we, I think you're it's so a, possessive. I think it's equivalent to a dwarf star. That's that's how large Jupiter yeah, is. Yeah, it's enormous. But you got this wild stallion moon out there. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> going nuts. Valentino going Anything. crazy yeah. out there. You so. can go your own way. He's like <laughs> montage, <laughs> and it's like really small too. It's like totally That's this awesome. like tiny moon. He's yes. like, yeah, just like <laughs> I'm going against your space. orbit, bro. What are you doing? Stop. That's my Valentino. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna ruin everything. 
That's my Valetuda. So That's cool as shit. 12 more moons in Jupiter, one crazy one. Hell that makes yes. 79 moons. Um, oh, go shit. Jupiter. Which country was the one who uh, broke this? Was this NASA or was this China? India has a really nice space program right now. This is true. But I don't have that information for you, Fred. Okay, so I'm I don't sorry. know. Thanks That's, for making you know, I went from feeling smart to feeling stupid. I never, way, pl- um, way to go. Way to go. Sorry. I, I, if you know, let us know on the Facebook there post. Go. There you go. On, for this mini sode, comment and we'll give you a like and we'll, you know, make faster better, than we'll name, it. We'll name one of Jupiter's pages. moons after you, officially. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can we'll we, petition for it. Can we get a. Uh, Rebecca the Moon. Can we get a uh, Freezy Fortito? Freezy Fortito. <laughs> Freezy Fortito satellite? <laughs> Sounds like a beverage. Well, wouldn't that be <laughs> that is, like a like a taco beverage, like a beverage you don't want? It was the Carnegie like Institution for Science cold beverage. Carnegie, yeah, Institution a for Science. Margarita. Like so, a gazpacho. So Carne- <laughs> Carnegie, I think, is New York Institution for Science. Yes. Yeah, so okay. That so is. Americans found it. Hell there you go. USA, USA, USA. What? Jupiter. No. no, nobody smart chants USA, guys. Oh, what? Damn. Smart people at NASA, you don't think they chant USA when they fucking like discover some new cool shit for America? Angela has been saying this since uh, she visited uh, New Zealand. Yes. Yep. The only <laughs> smart people chant New, new, new only, Zealand. Only dummies uh, chant USA. Oh, well. Because I asked, in New Zealand, did you chant USA? And she looked at me and she lost a lot of respect. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's okay. Can... I probably lost a lot of other people's respect today. So it's Oh, fine. come on. Yeah. Stop it. Hey, there's one big difference between the U.S. and New Zealand is that you won't see any map where they accidentally leave off the USA. But they leave off New Zealand all the time. All the time. All the time. Even the map out the living room <laughs> yeah. doesn't have New Zealand on Yeah, it. they forget about it all the time. <laughs> Maybe it's like Brigadoon. It disappears every so often and comes back. If you if you can give me a reason to care about New Zealand. <laughs> Flight of the Concords. Boom. There you go. That's one right there for you, buddy. There you go. Seal meat. Two. Seal meat. <laughs> Or wool, maybe. Maybe seal like meat. some wool. Fleece. Fleece it out. Actually, Fleece they're having a problem. Meat. They're having a problem with dairy farming now. It's like destroying their environment. Oh, no. So, yeah. People want it's New Zealanders. Want, Kiwis want cheese. They want cheese. They, they can, the Kiwis want them cheese. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what you got for us, Kaz? I uh, am continuing my uh, journey, I guess you would say, into these hour-long episodes of Preacher. You guys remember me talking about Preacher? Yeah, I need of to course. catch up. I need to catch up. We're into uh, season two at this point, and uh, they have done the. They're basically going into the, which to me is the creepiest region of the United States. The New Orleans, Bayou, Louisiana. It's the place, for me at least, that, that retains the most amount of that kind of like weird, antiquated mysticism well, and just yeah, like strange yeah. shit. Voodoo. Yeah. Angela brought that up on uh, episode 49. Yep. That American Gothic, I think you said. That uh, Ameri- Southern Gothic. Southern, Southern Gothic. Gothic. Southern yeah. Gothic. That's the word, yes. Yeah. yeah. Because- <laughs> it's my favorite. It makes everything creepy. I was, I was driving to work saying, I don't know what that means. I don't like. I don't know what the gothic. Like out loud. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to myself. Yeah. Seven forty-five yes. a.m. Sip yep. of coffee. Southern gothic. I, I don't, don't know what, what that is means. It? <laughs> like, well, I mean, what is what is gothic? Is it just uh, you know, like because I'm thinking of like the Visigoths, right? Like that's where like goth comes from. And it was like it was a try. It was like a it's nomadic tribe. Uh, evo- Elizabethan, right? It's about yes. an evocation of a theme. So it's like just you're dark. Thinking to etymology, think just like yeah, gothic. Like what do you think? Castles, Dracula. But why? Like, but dark spookiness. So just like that feeling. That's how words work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, your words, course, they course through my bones. Noted. <laughs> So Southern Gothic would be to apply the like American, you know, South, but then, you know, including that very, you know, like I said, sort of antiquated, weird, spooky, mysterious. Kaz is telling all of this while holding a <laughs> <I'd love that. laughs> and smacking the mic stand with it. I need, uh, <laughs> I need like, a, like a torch over yeah, here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> a skull. So anyway, they're going, they, they've gone to Louisiana and they're, they're exploring. Oh. Oh, I thought you meant... No, no sorry. This if you need a skull. skull, we have a ah. skull, skull for it. So they, uh... Oh! Jesus! Jeez! <laughs> I threw the skull a little too hard. I got it. just threw a skull. <laughs> I caught it. It's good. It's fun. Yeah, he skulls, caught it with one hand. Skull's amazing. intact. He just palmed it he got like some, a basketball. He had some tiny front teeth, but, you know, he was like a normal-headed sized dude. He was good. Preacher Season 2 has gone into the uh, the backstory of Jesse. 
and uh, that takes place in Louisiana. And that kind of bayou, you know, gross, grimy kind of uh, what what are those like uh, willows? The ones that have the Spanish moss, the Spanish, Spanish moss, moss everywhere yeah. and shit. The cypress and like, trees. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Is it like supernatural versus natural? Yes. So that's oh, yeah. that. I, I feel like yeah, that's a good uh, interpretation of preacher. Is they do a good or job nature, of rather. they everything hap- It's very comic booky, right? Like so, people are getting these very comic booky fights, but then this like extremely like dark realistic like violence and and sort of you know drama will happen in the middle of that so um in addition to kind of also being silly and and kind of funny so i don't know it's, it, it plays a lot of different uh notes but um season two the end of season one was extremely uh, you could tell they got like a lot of money it was like really high budget really high quality production everything was like game of thrones quality looking stuff and i was like really impressed season two they took it back down to the the kind of more character driven stuff and it's more about the writing uh for instance there's um not to give too much away but there's uh several scenes where they reference uh the way that Jesse's family used to punish him as oh, a God. child oh, yeah, for did. being uh disobedient or whatever not not uh conforming to their like weird sort of pseudo christian voodoo hybrid mix this woman is like religious but it's also like she does weird blood magic shit, and she like made, like tastes their blood and makes them say all this weird shit. Man, blood is such a turnoff, like to like a lot of people. Not me, of course, but blood. <laughs> like it's like, uh, well, you know, when we're talking about blood, uh, eh, but yet we love watching violent films. You know, like we don't mind seeing someone bleed out into a river as someone is trying <laughs> to CPR them, but then when it's like. Oh, wait, bloodletting and then the play with it? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> there is something to be said. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I, I read a, something about that. That's a good that. point, though, right? Absolutely. Sure. No, I read something about that in, in terms of like the horror genre and that people, the the more kind of like focused and finite you can make the experience makes it more squeamy, right? Yeah. So like somebody getting yes. stabbed is like, oh, okay. But somebody getting like their tongue split open is like, oh, Jesus Christ, what oh, the fuck yeah. is that, right? That's like, what... Uh, Guillermo del Toro does yes. so well. Yes. Um, was it um, uh, Crimson Peak? Oh, that's he gets. Uh, it's not really a spoiler alert, but he gets uh, stabbed right through his uh, zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone. He gets stabbed right through that, and then his face like kind of like hangs. Oh, it's just it's it's brutal. But that's like L- the, new, the nuance of injury, right? It's not just like yes. it's not you know like right Tom and Jerry bone. like a fucking safe falls on you. You're like okay, yeah. that's not that funny. But like seeing you know something more specific and understanding the the nuance of how that would hurt. Game was, of Thrones when he's like slicing his pinky. Blencing with uh, oh, blencing yeah. yes. blade. Uh. Ironically, that scene from Crimson Peak has no blood. Like it's just one of those things. It goes in and it's so realistic. There's just maybe a trickle. That's it. Right. That's uh, There's I no think, blood spray, which wouldn't make sense anyway with right. something going into the body. I watched something. Uh, I think Eli Roth was talking about doing. Uh, he did a scene where he was doing. Uh, this is one of his fucking Eli Roth torture porn movies. But it was like a fucking fingernail, like ripping someone's oh. fingernail off. Oh, yeah. And there's no blood. It was just pliers and like fake fingernail. Oh. But it's so like is gnarly. That cabin fever? Maybe. Mm. Cabin Fever had a few really those type of just uh, right. Like, it's called oh. body horror. Yes, exactly. Oh, I don't like. So it. anyway, they've they've gone into <laughs> Angela's dying. It really creeps Jesus. me they out. Do it. I don't. Like I know. It. Preacher season two does a good job about um, mixing in these very unique uh, body horror, I guess, moments into this kind of fantastical kind of superhero thing. So it's like everybody's invincible and everybody's kicking the shit out of each other, and then all of a sudden it's just like. Oh dear God! Uh, there's, <laughs> oh dear God! Uh, there's there's one scene in the first episode, and if you haven't watched any of the seasons yet, maybe check that one out as kind of a it's the 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 cold opener for the for the season, mm-hmm. I guess. And it is barring like some of the more uh, rapey American mm-hmm. horror story scenes, it was the most disturbing shit I had seen on like TV. And wow! It was fucking like uh you know, and I watch like David Lynch movie. I'm a horror movie fan, right? Yeah, I like of that course. Stuff. This is. You know what we're considering to be basic cable, right? FX. It's not HBO or anything no, like no. that. But uh, it was disturbing. But at the same time, folds into the plot and makes you like, "Holy shit! What the fuck's going on?" Like you want to understand who that is, what's going on, and very good story. And the, and the acting, fantastic. Whoever that Scottish guy is, the the vampire. Oh, he's awesome. He's amazing. Uh, he's that he guy's great. Really good in, work. Uh, Misfits in the TV show Misfits. He replaced a great character, 
and did a great job doing it. Yeah, that guy is spectacular. I don't know what his name is. Bloodsucker Jones. I'll find out what it is. He is. He he deserves some type of recognition because the man is extremely talented. Because we do not do our research. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) well, I'm like urging you to go check out Preacher and and uh, you know tell me what you think. Awesome. What do you got for us, man, Daddy? Well, uh, I watched a great. Let me get that skull from you. Um, (laughs) A great documentary on a great band that not uh, enough people know about. The name of the film is The Theory of Obscurity. And it's about the band The Residents. Is anyone familiar with The Residents? I don't no. think I've. They've been around since 1971. Oh, The Residents. They oh, still, yeah, yeah. Uh, they still have been touring. Like uh, their last tour was, I think, two, three years ago. And no one knows what they look like. No one knows their real names. No one's heard their real voices. Question. Yes. Residents, like T S or The e? Residents. The residents, like the resident in a home. Or, okay. Yeah. But like plural residents. The residents. Or, or the residents. Like residents. Like with a the T. The residents. With a T. Okay. Residents. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't, I'm not Multiple residents. No, no. That's a great not question. the residents, like a no, place where the you place, reside. The, the what's inside drive. of it. Thank what's you. inside the residence. Okay. So we can look it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Damn. You get so spicy. I'm with holding a skull and I will beat the <laughs> shit out of you with it. <laughs> You don't have to immediately rever- you know, revert to violence. He was just, you know, was a, maybe was a I do. Question from maybe I did. Okay. Oh, I was fine with the question. It was my fault. You just want to kill Cass. <laughs> That's you what I hit you with the skull. Is what what is. Me? A lot of no. anger displacement. Give me the skull. Take the skull. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Christ. you might have seen their, because uh, they always perform wearing uh, different masks and costumes. Cool. When They've never done interviews, and if they have, they're through uh, other people or through voice emulators and stuff, never showing their faces. I love their that. main image that people are used to are the white tuxedos, giant eyeballs with uh, top hats on them. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I have yes. to. That's have them. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. And they're absolutely. There's nothing like them, and they don't. What do look they at, do? Is is the normal set without like voice mod- modulation? Is it like people singing, or is like it's it's like nothing you've ever seen? I mean, there's there's people singing, there's people singing, uh, uh, screaming, dancing. Okay. Uh, it's all over the place. Okay. So you it's know, like free form. Very. It's very, every album uh, goes in a different direction. Uh, there's uh, like one album they do that's uh, like one of the most popular ones. It's called the commercial album. And uh, it's basically a take on American jingles. Mm-hmm. And that pop music is just jingles broken down. And so they just uh, yeah. made every song in the album is exactly one minute long. And so that's the song. If you, uh, That's the, uh, the just that. If you would play it three times in a row, that's the pop song. But they just take one minute of it. And so it's a 60 songs, one minute long each. And there's just nothing. And they, when they perform, they, just, they, they really put a different edge to it. Uh, they were one of the first bands to really utilize all new media. Like they're the first ones to use videotape. They're the first ones you really utilize um, CD-ROM, and they really uh, utilize the internet. So they're very just innovative in the most amazing fucking way. Do you remember uh, CD extras? Oh yeah, I think the first one I bought was uh, Aerosmith Nine Lives. Boy <laughs> Vod had one on their uh, album Negatron. They That's had cool. a, yeah, but just there's just CD extras. By the way, when you when you put that album into your uh, like old computer, like Windows, whatever. It would this pop up screen, which was crazy at the time, would would just pop up, and you could play video games on it or just read every lyric, and that was just that it's a blew app my mind. That basically, went with yep. your music. Kind of, that yeah. cool. basically. But if you, it's Sorry. just it's called the Theory of Obscurity, and it's just a really good documentary. And you know, and even in the documentary, they keep on saying, you know, this all may not be. No one knows if it's one guy, if it's three guys, if it's been different people the entire time. It's just they've always kept it that way. When they sent out their first demo, it got sent back to them, and they they said it with no name because they didn't want to have a name. They said it with no name. It got sent back to the residents at oh. such and such, oh. and so they go, "Oh, we're the residents." Shit. Yeah, that's nice. cool. And so that's cool. it's a really good documentary. It's free on Pluto TV right now. That's how I found it. So if you have the Pluto TV app, no one it's has free Pluto on TV. Now. I can download it. <laughs> hey, it's on it. Netflix. Uh no, it's now my Netflix. Uh, I could probably ask, but what's it called again? It's called uh the theory the theory of obscurity. Okay, the theory cool. of obscurity. It's real. It's just really cool. And if you've never uh, really know what the residents are about, that's a good way to check them out. Fuck yeah, nice. Nice. very nice. cool. Thank you. Oh, so please check. Please, they'll thank you. Um, so there's like they don't know if at any given time there's three people, ten, sixty, like a million. Yeah, I mean there's there. It basically looks like it's three people. That it's you know three maybe four. No, like three to four people. Uh, but you never know if they've been different people or if it's been the same people. There, there's a guy that the voice is very distinct, and so they're showing a clip from them playing in 2014, 
And the guy singing just sounded like the guy from the very first album. It's like, oh, okay, that guy's got to be the same guy. Couldn't you also, via a uh, Freedom of Information request, figure out where the 1092s or what, 10 No, because are- it all goes through the Cryptic Corporation. They have they they and they've been using the cryptic cor- corporation since 1972. Well, that's cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. I did, not not knowing that, that's even better. Yeah, yeah so I have to check this out. They have like a shell, basically. Mm-hmm. Like One more time, what's basically. it called? What's it called? Uh, the theory of obscurity. The theory of obscurity. that. That's how okay. musicians create the best work is when they're obscure and not worrying about people uh, paying attention to them I or uh, you know fo- you know getting into their lives or anything. The more obscure, the m- the more free you are. Nice. Kaz and I were actually talking about this today about um, how. Uh, when when people get into writer's blocks, it's because they are thinking of themselves as like always constantly creating this one image. Hmm. Or and creating you, okay. something good, right? Like yeah. they, they think it's of them as be a good. good writer or a good whatever, and so then, they're not going to do that stupid thing. I think I brought up, you know, all all you need to do is just take one chord, like a bump, 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 and then just do a song around that, only that one thing, and that's a vamp. Kind of like a don't stop till you get enough. Come on, when the beat don't or a bom 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 Prince. That's a vamp. Yeah. Just one idea, and you can write a song. Write a song, get it done, and then go on from that. You just know? do it. Just make just the art. Do it and get it done. Stop thinking about it. But yeah. when you don't have to think about it like that, then you're constantly evolving. Yeah. And they you, didn't want anything to sound the same. They didn't want to repeat themselves. They yep. just always wanted to be new and evolving. You can never be pinned to that table. That's fucking amazing. Uh, it's, it, you, you of all people, I think you'd love this. I think I love it. Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> I think I already love it. How many, how many uh, mandated beard pulls do you give it? <laughs> Preemptive. <laughs> Preemptive? <laughs> the first ever. A solid zero. Damn. Oh, shit. Preemptive. We're going to have to, like, we're actually. Yeah, Wait, zero means now. no thoughts, right? <laughs> I guess it does now. But I will watch it. <laughs> by the way, Moana, that's a seven for me. Moana, seven? my God, I just watched Moana. I think that's the best Disney slash Pixar movie they've ever made. Really? Back to Flight of the Concords. And and my wife, Miss Fritz, said, you haven't even seen Toy Story 1, 2, and 3, though. <gasps> you haven't seen Toy Story 1? What? Or 2 or 3. I so don't want to see 3. We are We're not into crying. Uh, 3 was way too much for me. Uh, yeah, sure. I looked I've, over like, at my friend at some part and I said, "Why did you let me watch this?" And yeah. she just like shrugged her shoulders. It's the handmaid's no tale of Pixar. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn. She just looked looked at you with this possum expression on she's her face as like, she's well, heating up the meth pipe. <laughs> yeah. It was awful. It changed my life. The densest whitest smoke. Yeah, uh, not not into that. I don't need that. Well, let me tell you where uh, you can check out more of Fort Fritz. We always want to hear from you. You can go to Facebook. Just search at Fort Fritz. You can also search for us on Instagram. Sure. <laughs> if you find, us. Yes, if you find us, tell us what Please we are on us. Instagram. Isn't it at Fort we don't even Fritz? research ourselves. At Fort it's Fritz. At Fort Fritz. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Yeah. But who has access to that? Now? <laughs> I don't think I do. I don't think. Oh, uh, it's a lost yeah. account. Anyway, we need an uh, agent. You can also uh, call us. We need us. a cryptic corporation. Is all we need. Yeah, probably. You can always uh, call us. It's uh, area code five seven zero seven eight four seven eight three seven eight nine. That's five seven zero four seven eight three seven eight nine. We don't know who we are. That's also five seven zero area That's code. Very true. 4RT, like Fort F-R-T-Z. And uh, give us a call. Leave a leave us a nice voice message. If we can, we probably don't have the code to listen to the voice message. <laughs> no, I do. I have that. We can, yeah. Yeah. We have to send up smoke signals. We're lost. Like Come find us. Send, us. send a raven if you have one. <laughs> yep. And I think that's it. Yeah, thank you very much for listening. Keep on listening. Uh, keep on sharing. Remember, check out the full episodes with storylines and sound effects and the fun fun. Hey, how about maybe dropping us a review or something yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, on one of our many social media things that we maybe will find at some point. We'll see your review. Definitely Facebook. If you put it on Facebook, we'll see it and we will appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening to Fort Fritz.